Will the children please come forward? It's great when you guys sing a cappella. It's really nice. Come on down. It's great you guys are here. Thanks for coming. <laughs> oh my goodness. A couple more takers, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Two more coming. It's okay. Take your time. We're good. We're good. I got all day. I got all day. I got nowhere to be. I'm already where I'm supposed to be. Thanks for coming down. Have a seat. Well done. Well, I'm really glad you're here today. It's a special weekend, isn't it? Because it's Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Uh, holiday. Uh, tomorrow, and all weekends, things have been going on in, in and around town. Does, it, does anybody know anything about Martin Luther King Jr.? What can you tell me? What, anything about him? You know anything about him? Big picture, small picture, anything? Anything? What do you know? He was a very important figure. He was a very important figure. How come? He did like, a lot of stuff to help people gain their rights. Good, yeah. He did a lot of important things to help people get their rights, yeah. Yes. Wow. You're right. Yeah. The whole Rosa Parks um, uh, protests that happened, and he was very much a part of that. Right. Yeah. There's a lot that you can um, read about him, things that he wrote, things that he said, a lot of movies have been made about him, a lot of things to find out about Martin Luther King because he was. A, a very important person in uh, our country, in our history, uh, back in the 1960s. 
Um, but here's, a, here's kind of an easy, easy broad stroke way of thinking about who he was. Martin Luther King Jr. was a man of faith, first and foremost. He was a, he was a pastor. And he noticed something and he believed something. He believed that God created the universe, God created this world, God created all the people in the world, and God created all the people in the world to be different. And he created all, God created all the people to be different because God likes it that way. God likes people to be different because that's how people are special. That's how people are special. And God loves those differences. And Martin Luther King noticed that we didn't think like that. People don't think like that. People look at differences and think, that's not okay. That's not okay that you're not like I am. That's not okay that your skin color is different than mine, or you're speaking a different language, you're eating different food, you're wearing different kinds of clothes, your hair is different. What? All those differences are not okay. In fact, they're not only not okay, people who are in power, who have more control, put people down because they're different and treat them in very horrible ways. And Martin Luther King said, that's not okay. That's not okay. We need to change that. We need to change that. So he went about this important work of preaching and teaching and sharing and leading protests uh, to help change people's thinking, to help change the laws uh, at that time. But his work is not done. It's not done because we still don't celebrate the diversity of God's people in the way that we should, the way that God does, the way God celebrates all of us because we're different. So often we want people to be like us, be just like us, look like us, talk like us, whatever it is. And so we need to keep up the work, the work of changing people's minds, our own minds, other people's minds, changing laws, changing the way uh, we treat other people in school, in our community, in our world. So that's why this holiday is so important. It's not just about the history of who he was and what he did in the past tense. It's about now. It's about right now. It's a more than just a three-day weekend. It's about what are we going to do to carry on the work that he started in our church, in our lives, in our world. So I'm glad you're here because uh, it, uh, it gets us thinking about that and gets us thinking about not just what, what's, what's this country going to do, but what are you going to do? What are we, each one of us, going to do uh, in our own lives to make this world a better place and to reflect the love of God that's in each one of us and among us? All right. Thanks for that. Thanks for sharing that. And I'm glad you came up. You can go sit with your families. Wonderful. You sound great. Have a seat. It's one of those uh, unusual Sundays where we have no meetings after worship today, but I did want to highlight a couple of announcements. Uh, uh, tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day itself, and uh, the Melrose Human Rights Commission will be hosting the uh, City of Melrose uh, gathering uh, program uh, for the city right here tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock in this room. Uh, so hope you can stop by for that. Uh, the um, uh, keynote speaker is Roland. He's with us this morning. I'm sure he'd be happy to chat with you at the uh, coffee hour if you'd like. Um, and uh, it's a little bit different this year. In the past, there's been a potluck uh, out in the narthex before coming into the sanctuary. Uh, they're foregoing that this year because of uh, ongoing concerns around the pandemic, uh, having a, a, a community meal like that. So uh, the, the, the evening starts at 7 o'clock uh, with the program here in the sanctuary. So hope you can come for that. Uh, next Sunday, um, uh, Sunday school uh, does uh, resume uh, next Sunday, uh, and a reminder that if you have not registered your children yet for Sunday school, it is not too late to do that, uh, and we hope that you will. It helps us with uh, uh, our our records and and uh, helping to to uh, uh, with the programming that we design uh, for that uh, that uh, Sunday school. Uh, there is a QR code to register. It's easy. Uh, if you prefer hard copy, we'll find you one of those too. But most people do it online, uh, and there's a QR code on the welcome uh, table in the narthex. You just go to that, and, and, uh, and uh, that'll connect you up in an easy way to do that. 
Also next Sunday after worship, uh, in, here in the sanctuary, I'll be hosting an inquirer's class. Uh, this is for anybody who wants to learn more about our church, uh, who we are here at First Congregational Church, who we are as the United Church of Christ. Uh, if you are thinking of membership here at First Congregational Church, this would be the avenue to uh, bring that uh, about, to uh, uh, go down that path. And that would be exciting if you, if you choose to do that. But regardless, come on by. Even if you've been here for a while and you're not sure what's going on, how we're structured, what's the governance, who's, what are these deacons, what do they do? Come on by uh, and uh, some basics about who we are as First Congregational Church. Inquirer's class after worship next Sunday. Hope you can come for that. And then the confirmation class uh, continues next Sunday evening, 7 o'clock here at the church. We'll be getting acquainted a little bit better with one another uh, as that program gets underway. Right now, your offering is uh, invited. We continue to take that in a contactless way. The offering plates are at the exits of the sanctuary. We hope as we sing the doxology now that you'll consider your giving to First Congregational Church as we strive to uh, embody the love and compassion and justice and peace of Christ uh, in this place through the ministries we undertake here. Your offering is invited. And I invite you to hear these words from the book of Exodus. Exodus is a long book. This is the, towards the beginning. It's in the third chapter. This is all around uh, Moses' encounter with God on Mount Sinai, the burning bush. It should sound familiar. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. Now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you. And this shall be a sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. God said further, thus shall you say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus shall you say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my title for all generations. Here ends our scripture lessons for this morning. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of these holy words. And will you pray with me? <clears throat> Compassionate Creator, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and our hearts. Bring us into deeper relationship with you, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, it is MLK weekend, and it seems to me that Martin Luther King Jr. Day is a holiday that can get lost in the shuffle. At best, for a lot of people, it can easily feel like just a great three-day weekend that's right in the middle of January. But for a lot of people, they don't even seem to realize that it's a thing. I know this because in Melrose, <laughs> trash pickup is delayed one day and people still put the trash out on the same day. And this weekend should be about a whole lot more than that. And this text from Exodus can be a gateway to getting at God's role in the mix of it all and how we can find a greater connection to it. Moses is talking to God, who appears to him as a burning bush. And God says, I've seen the misery of my people, I've heard their cry, I know their sufferings, and I have come to 
deliver them. This is probably one of the greatest passages in all of Scripture, isn't it? I, God, uh, has, I've seen the misery, I've heard their cry, know their sufferings, come to deliver them. There's a universality to these words because in one form or another, we all suffer. We all suffer. It's part of the human condition. It may be in the form of systemic racial discrimination. It may be in the form of misogyny. It may be in the form of homophobia. It may be in the form of nationalism, that you're not welcome here because you're from somewhere else. It may be in the form of ageism and the way people don't take you seriously or count you as an equal when you're very old or, for that matter, when you're very young. It may be in the form of the suffering you experience at the loss of a job or when a relationship buckles or chronic pain in your body somewhere or the death of a loved one. We all suffer in some way. The Israelites suffered. But here's the thing. They did not suffer in silence. They cried out. They cried out to God. Notice that. They talked to God about what was happening and what could be done about it. They were probably also sharing and commiserating with one another, trying to find a way forward. That's a great lesson for all of us, really. Whatever suffering you are enduring, personal or, or social, don't bottle it up. It's okay to cry out to God, to talk to God, even argue with God. It's also good to share with others, whether it's here in worship during our prayers of the people time or during coffee hour. You are in a safe, positive community of faith that you can lean on. Now, I know that sometimes when we pray, it can be like, are you there, God? Are you there? Do you see, do you know what's happening to me? What I'm going through right now, do you know? And here's the comfort that this text offers. Yes, yes, God says very directly here, yes, God hears your cries. Take that into your prayer time because you can then pray with the expectation, the expectation that God hears, God sees, God feels, God feels what's happening in your life right now. God grieves whenever the life of even one of God's children is diminished. Now, one of the gifts of Martin Luther King Jr. Day is to help us expand our understanding of what crying out looks like. Prayer and community sharing is crucial, but it can also take the form of public protest. When your working conditions are causing you to suffer, when your rent is unaffordably high, when the cost of basic health care has put you financially underwater, when you feel unsafe on our streets because of your gender or your race, it's okay to cry out in protest. It's good to make some noise, to be noticed, to demand change. When you do, it starts a ball rolling. It starts a ball rolling for change in your own life and in society. It pushes back against the forces of hate. And most importantly, God hears that cry. God hears your cry and God comes to deliver. God delivers through organizations that join you in your protest. God delivers through new found friends who can remind you that you are not facing any suffering on your own. God delivers you through renewed energy in your own self that can motivate you to change your situation in ways that you hadn't even thought of before that can alleviate your suffering. God hears and God delivers. And let me add this. If none of these issues that I've been naming this morning affect you, you still have a faith calling to love your neighbor 
as yourself and to reach out to those who are suffering in these ways. You can be the means by which God delivers companionship and hope and healing and new beginning in other people's lives. Stand with them in their pain because that's where God is. What is so wonderful about this text is that it tells us about the nature of God. What's God like? God is someone who cares for us. God is one who hears, who sees, who comes to act against the forces of hardship and oppression. And guess what? Guess what? That should be our identity too. We are to be those who see, hear, and act in the name of freedom and wholeness. To walk with those who are moving from captivity of one kind or another to liberation. See, God says to Moses, I have come down to deliver, so, so, I will send you, Moses, to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God needs a conduit. God is always ready to act and needs us to carry out the action. God needs us to show up. Now that may look different for each one of us, but we need to show up and engage with others in their struggle because when we stand with people who are working to end oppression and who are working for justice and peace, we not only find others to walk with us in our own trials, we reveal together the very heart of God. God called Moses at the burning bush to be a conduit and you may not believe it, but God calls you as well. And most people, most people just brush that off as an impossibility because they feel unworthy. Who am I to be a conduit for God's activity in the world? But that's pretty much what Moses said, right? Me? Seriously? Who am I that I should tell them? They won't believe me. Said that Mo, it said that Moses had a speech impediment. He also came from this confusing background as a Hebrew living in the house of Pharaoh. They're not going to take me seriously, he says. We all say that, too, if we even consider God's calling in our own lives in the first place. But God assures Moses and God assures us because God has a habit of choosing the most unlikely people to do the most remarkable things. God has a habit of choosing the most unlikely people to do the most remarkable things. So on this MLK weekend, know that it's okay to cry out in your suffering. Know that God hears your cry, sees your pain, and comes to deliver. Know also that God calls you to be a conduit for God's peace, justice, and healing in the lives of others. God may not be calling you to lead slaves out of Egypt and wander the desert for 40 years, but God is calling you. And once you're past your doubts and refusals, listen to that calling again, and the way will become clear. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, loving God, we come here in joy this morning, but we pray that we never wear our joy to mask great pain. Give us license to cry out to you in our pain. And help us to trust that you hear us when we cry out and that you long to deliver us to a life of wholeness. On this MLK weekend, give us the courage to become more involved in the struggle against hatred and oppression. For in doing so, we make your presence known and build your realm that Jesus came to proclaim. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.